All rise. All those having business before the Honorable Burrow A. Howell, Chief Judge of the United States District Court, in and for the District of Columbia, now holding these naturalization ceremonies, will draw nigh and give their attention. God save the United States of America and this Honorable Court. Please remain standing for the presentation of the colors, the playing of the national anthem, and the retirement of the colors. Please be seated and come to order. This honorable court is now in session. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. How are you all this morning? Oh, come on. Thank you. OK, this is a very joyous occasion. So let's be vigorous about it. Today is a very memorable and uh, important milestone for all of our new citizens today. And as the Chief Judge for the United States District Court for the District of Columbia, it is my privilege to be presiding over the ceremony this morning. The ceremony began this morning with the Joint Armed Forces Color Guard presenting our nation's flag and the flags of the different branches of the U.S. military so that we can all show our pride in our country and the military servicemen and women who help defend its security. The flag is an important symbol, and we are so fortunate to stand here in the rotunda next to the foundational documents that give meaning to that flag and our country. We're going to hear later from three very special speakers who will help commemorate this occasion. Um, but before we get to our speakers, the court recognizes Cheryl Horn, Public Operations Administrator for the District Court for the District of Columbia. She will introduce those persons seeking to become new citizens. Cheryl. Thank you, Your Honor. May it please the court when your name is called, please stand and answer here or present and remain standing. Sylvanius Romeo Zenau Benin, Mauricio Paletto, Italy, Egents Caney Tenbrook, Liberia, Donna Patricia Hines, Guyana, 
Anastasio Canales, El Salvador. Song Dat, Vietnam. Samira Hossein, Bangladesh. Hawaba, Senegal. Abebech, Chakal, Ethiopia. Juliet Sanchez, Aranda, Colombia. Sam Palanasami, Raj, India. Bethlehem, Beni, Ethiopia. Henry Garcia Alvarez, El Salvador. Benedicta Njoku, Nigeria. Abeba Walter Selassie, Ethiopia. M.D. Shokat Abbor, Bangladesh. Eveline Charlotte Jaquette, France. Rachel Piercy, Canada. Mulanesh Desta Waldeselassie, Ethiopia. Muriel Bepe, Cameroon. Isanani Marguerite Karam, Togo. Adrian Voiku, Romania. Jana Voiku, Slovakia. Mohammed Baluchi, Pakistan. Phyllis Frost, Canada. Karen Zakaras, Mexico. Fidel Lopez, El Salvador. Yacuba Atara, Cote d'Ivoire. Aladia Garces Guy, Panama. And Berberket Adha, Eritrea. Your Honor, there are 30 applicants for naturalization, and each of the applicants have been examined by the United States Citizenship and Immigration Service. And the government has completed its investigation in each case. It has been determined that each applicant is eligible for naturalization at this time. I move that upon taking the oath of allegiance to the United States of America, each applicant present, having answered to his or her name, to include those prayers for name change, be granted naturalization as citizens of the United States of America. The motion is granted. Ooh, exactly. Well, you still have to take the oath before it becomes effective. So let's move right on to that. Everybody who's being naturalized, please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I hereby declare on oath that I absolutely and entirely renounce and abjure all allegiance and fidelity to any foreign prince, potentate, state, or sovereignty. of whom or which I have heretofore been a subject or citizen, that I will support and defend the Constitution and the laws of the United States of America against all enemies foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I will bear arms on behalf of the United States when required by the law, that I will perform non-combatant service 
in the armed forces of the United States when required by law. That I will perform work of national importance under civilian direction when required by law. And that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. So help me God. Congratulations to each of you. Everyone, please be seated. Please welcome students from the Capitol Hill Montessori at Logan, who will recite the preamble of the U.S. Constitution. Establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote general, general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. Do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. Welcome to the stage, the Archivist of the United States, David S. Ferriero. Good morning and welcome to the rotunda of the National Archives. First and foremost, congratulations to our 30 new citizens and thank you to the Capitol Hill Montessori School at Logan for that wonderful recitation of the preamble. Thank you. It's great to have the Honorable Elaine Duke, Acting Secretary of Homeland Security, and James McCammett, Acting Director of the United States Citizenship and Immigration Services, here with us today to celebrate your American citizenship. A special thanks to Chief Justice Beryl Howell for her return this morning, presiding over the ceremony. The National Archives is pr proud to host this naturalization ceremony each year with the Department of Homeland Security, U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services and the U.S. District Courts for the District of Columbia. And there's no better place to become an American citizen than here in front of the Charters of Freedom. Behind me is the Constitution. In the Oath of Allegiance, you swore to support and defend this very document. It is the basis on which the U.S. government is structured. The preamble, which you just heard, contains three important words, we the people. That brief phrase captures the essence of our democracy. The Constitution gives the power to the people. Over to my right is the Declaration of Independence, 
the parchment that the Founding Fathers signed in 1776 in Philadelphia, setting us free from England. It took courage for them to sign, to sign that document. They risked their lives, their families' lives, and all they owned, and we have them to thank for the freedoms we enjoy today. And to my left is the Bill of Rights, the first 10 amendments to the Constitution. These, spell, these first 10 spell out the basic personal rights and freedoms that are guaranteed to every American. This now includes you. They include the freedom of speech, religion and the press, the right to petition the government, the right to bear arms, and the right to due process of law and a speedy and fair trial. You will exercise these rights every day. These documents, these charters of freedom, make up our foundation as U.S. citizens. I'm the grandson of Italian immigrants and great-grandson of Irish immigrants. Using passenger ship lists here at the National Archives, I discovered that my grandfather, at age 15, arrived in Boston from Naples aboard the ship Commonwealth in March of 1903. And my grandmother, Antonia Giorgio, also from Naples, arrived in 1909 in Boston aboard the Romantic. Many Americans have stories like mine, and now you, our newly naturalized citizens, will have your own journey to share. We have over 13 billion pages of records here at the National Archives. Becoming American citizens make you part of the National Archives. Your naturalization, naturalization records will be part of our holdings, and someday, your descendants will search our records to discover your history. Here at the National Archives, history comes to life through our records. We house the tangible re reminders of where we have been, how far we have come, and what is possible for each and every American. Each record, large or small, is a representation of a greater story. And the National Archives tells everyone's story. And now I'd like to introduce James McCammond, Acting Director of U.S. Citizen and Immigration Services. Previously, he served as Deputy Associate Director, Service Center Operations, overseeing the work of five USCIS service centers in their processing of more than four million applications annually. He also served as the Chief of the USCIS Office of Legislative Affairs and was a senior counselor to the director of USCIS and a special advisor to the Department of Homeland Security Secretaries Tom Ridge and Michael Chertoff. A founding member of DHS, he served first in the office of general counsel. Director McCammett received his Juris Doctor from the University of Notre Dame Law School and his bachelor's degree from Mount Vernon Nazarene College. He's an adjunct professor of law at the Antonin Scalia Law School at George Mason University. Please welcome Acting Director James McCammond. Thank you, Mr. Ferrio, for that kind introduction. Congratulations. As the Acting Director of U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, it is my great honor to address you as my fellow Americans on this milestone day in your lives here in this very special place. I would like to thank uh, Chief Judge Howell and the U.S. District Court, as well as, of course, the Honorable Archivist David Ferriero for providing us with this inspiring and historic venue. This naturalization ceremony today marks the end of your journey towards citizenship, just as it marks the start of your new life as active, engaged American citizens. I cannot think of a more appropriate venue to welcome you than here at the National Archives, which, as the archivist mentioned, houses the documents on which our democracy was based, documents that continue to guide us today. As America's newest citizens, all of you will be united by the civic ideals and a belief in the rights and freedoms guaranteed by the U.S. Constitution. The Constitution includes a provision for a rule of naturalization. So from the founding of our nation, the Constitution, whose preamble you heard, contains citizenship as a core value. And upon taking the oath of allegiance, each one of you have joined an esteemed group of contributors to our society who also chose to make the United States their adopted home. Contributors such as Madeleine Albright, 
our first female Secretary of State, and Albert Einstein, the Nobel Prize winning scientist. In your United States, we never have to look too far to see how immigrants are contributing to the vibrancy and foundational success of our great nation each and every day. Our new Americans are educators, entrepreneurs, innovators, philanthropists, public servants, and veterans. As new citizens, whether you run for public office or cast your vote on election day, your participation carries on our proud history as a nation of immigrants and as a country that opens its arms to those who embrace our ideals. When you volunteer with a local organization or own a business or serve in our armed forces or on a jury, by those actions, each of us and you add to the vitality of our great country. We need your talents, your hard work and creativity to keep this country strong. We need you to dream the big dreams about what this nation can be from where it is today. And together, we can persevere against threats to our nation's safety and freedom. Through the contributions that each one of you make to our country, each of you reinforces our country's proud and unique heritage as a nation of immigrants. So please know, your hard work and de determination we recognize have led you here today and it will be your spirit and your dedication to America's enduring values and ideals that will help carry out our great nation forward for many generations to come. Thank you for joining us, and congratulations. And now to introduce our keynote speaker, Elaine Duke is the Acting Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security. She was previously sworn in as the seventh Deputy Secretary of DHS on April 10th, 2017. An accomplished leader and a civil servant for most of her career, Acting Secretary Duke has served in the federal government for nearly three decades, most recently as the Under Secretary for Management at the Department of Homeland Security, a position she held from 2008 to 2010. She's received her BS in Business Management from New Hampshire College, now Southern New Hampshire University, and her MBA from Chaminade University in Honolulu. Over the course of her federal government service, Acting Secretary Duke has received the Presidential Meritorious Rank Award, the DHS Secretary's Medal, the TSA Silver Medal for Customer Service, the Department of the Army's Commander's Award for Public Service, and the U.S. Coast Guard's Distinguished Public Service Medal. Please welcome A Acting Secretary Elaine Duke. Good morning, citizens. It's such an honor to be here with you today. And thank you, Archivist Ferriero, uh, for having hosting today. What a, what a beautiful venue. It's a privilege for me to join you and your families today on your first day as citizens of the United States of America. It is especially an honor to stand here in the rotunda among the charters of freedom and reflect on the promise of our great nation. For years, before I was the Acting Secretary of Homeland Security, I taught civics to people like you preparing for the naturalization test, a test each of you knows well and that I'm sure each of you aced. I taught civics to immigrants because I believe in the American dream you all have and pursued to success. I believe in our system of government, in our laws, and in our rights and responsibilities as citizens. I believe in tolerance, and I believe in inclusion. I believe we all have the potential to change our country and our communities for the better. And I believe that it is our duty to do so. This Sunday, we mark the 230th signing of the United States Constitution, the supreme law of the United States. To go back to those civics lessons, the Constitution was set up and defined the U.S. government. It also protects the fundamental rights of all citizens. It was the first permanent written Constitution of its kind and one that has survived for centuries. This is a remarkable accomplishment and a testament to the strength 
of the so-called noble experiment. By design, attaining citizenship in the United States is a matter of commitment and conscience, not a fact of heritage or history. President Ronald Reagan once received a letter from a man shortly before Reagan left office. I'd like to quote that for you now. He wrote that you can go to live in France, but you cannot become a Frenchman. You can go to live in Germany or Italy, but you can't become a German, an Italian. He went through Turkey, Greece, Japan, and other countries. But he said anyone from any corner of the world can come to live in the United States and become an American. And people have become Americans in great numbers. Over the past decade, we welcome more than 7.4 million naturalized, naturalized citizens into the fabric of our nation. In last fiscal year 2016 alone, three quarters of a million people took the same oath you did today, and over a million immigrants moved to the United States to start the journey to citizenship you just completed today. Throughout our history, people have come to the United States in pursuit of freedom and opportunity. Whether they wanted to be free to practice their religion, free to choose their leaders, or free to speak their mind, this country is a place where freedom is a right for all our citizens, whether natural born or naturalized. Over the centuries, America has been enriched by the talents, cultures, skills, ingenuity, and values brought here by immigrants. It continues to be enriched by the gifts you bring here with you today. It hasn't always been easy. In each generation, immigrants have worked hard to find their place and to build their own American dream. But we live in a land of opportunity where countless immigrants have built businesses, strengthened their communities, and made their dreams come true. Each of you has taken a unique and exceptional journey to arrive here at the National Archives today. But you are all part of a great tradition in a great country, and, are and we are proud to welcome you home. In choosing to become citizens of the United States, you demonstrated that you value our country. You value the rule of law. You value the time and effort it takes to do things the right way. Your commitment to these values is a tremendous strength to this nation. There is no question that we are living in a time of division in the world. We see demonstrations of ugliness and intolerance in our streets, on their internet, and in the in evening news. We see that what's right is not always popular, and what's popular is not always right. We see the censorship and the controversial ideas we see a lack of civil discourse on important topics. We often see a race by many to label those that disagree with the, those that they disagree with as evil, or those who have quarrels with as morally flawed. But just as you have come from different backgrounds and bring different views and different ideas to your new nation, a diversity of thought and viewpoints can ultimately make our nation better and stronger. Challenging each other intellectually, defending your own ideas, and learning from your, from your neighbors is vital. There's another President Reagan quote, one that I think of often and truly love. That is, if we love our country, we should also love our countrymen. We can be better. We must be better. Our nation was built on the highest ideals, and those ideals were brought to life by hardworking, law-abiding citizens. People gave their lives for our nation's freedom. We owe them the continuation of law and order and the responsibility of good citizenship. The world is a different place today than when the Constitution was signed 230 years ago. One thing that has not changed, though, is that the United States of America is for we, the people. In the preamble of the Constitution, we talk about establishing a more perfect union. In that phrase, more perfect, is the potential of we, the people. We are free to practice our religion. 
We are free to speak out against intolerance. We are free to petition our government, and we are free to peacefully protest. We are free to volunteer with organizations that speak to our hearts. We are free to make good personal choices as well as bad. We are free to vote for the leaders we choose. We, the people, live in the land of the free. No one is above the Constitution. It belongs to all of us. So does our nation belong to its citizens. I know your journey to this moment has involved a lot of hard work. I congratulate you, and I congratulate your families, and I wish you all the happiness of the world in celebrating this amazing accomplishment. But as citizens, we still have work to do in pursuit of a more perfect nation. So participate in your local community. Vote in every single election. Voice your ideas. Make your mark in this amazing land of opportunity. I wish you all the best in living and achieving your American dream. Welcome home, my federal citizens, and thank you for the honor of being with you here today. Thank you, Secretary Duke. I join the archivist, uh, David Ferriero, Acting Director McCammett, and Secretary Duke uh, in welcoming you all as America's newest citizens. And I hope that you've all been inspired by their messages today and their service to our country. I'd also like to thank the students from Capitol Hill Montessori School uh, for participating in our proceedings and uh, by highlighting orally the preamble to our U.S. Constitution. How appropriate those first three words are, we the people, at a naturalization ceremony, because those three words were actually written by an immigrant, a man named James Wilson, who came to this country at the age of 23 from a poor farming family in Scotland. And he went on to be at the Constitutional Convention write those three words that were incorporated into our U.S. Constitution, and then become one of the justices on our very first Supreme Court. So we the people, very appropriate for this ceremony. While our Declaration of Independence, Constitution, and Bill of Rights rest under glass here in this room, the goals, the ideals, the framework of these aspirational documents live on vigorously to guide our country. When the framers signed our Constitution on September 17, 1787, they recognized that this country would grow and flourish with new immigrants becoming new citizens. And as uh, Director McCammett mentioned, they reserved to the newly created federal government the power, and I quote from the Constitution, to establish all uniform rule of naturalization. So the importance of naturalized citizens has continued to be recognized in our Constitution. And in the post-Civil War 14th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, the drafters stated expressly that people naturalized in the United States are citizens of the United States. So to commemorate the day that the Constitution was signed, every seven, September 17th has been named Constitution week, day, with the week surrounding it, this week, uh, named Constitution Week. So by your action today of becoming naturalized U.S. citizens, you're fulfilling a vision of America laid out 230 years ago. Most Americans in this country are here because their parents, their grandparents, or more distant relatives, in my case, my great-grandparents, made the courageous choice that each of you has made to leave the countries where you grew up, where you have family, where you know the language, to follow your dreams to this country. And this is not easy. And I know that you have waited a long time, dealt with the federal bureaucracy, and worked hard to arrive at this day. People do come to America for many different reasons. Some leave the countries of their birth with sadness, 
in order to escape difficult situations, including war. But all who come here aspire to build better lives for themselves and very importantly for their children. It is just thrilling to see the number of countries from which you all have come. After the ceremony is concluded, we will have new citizens from over 20 countries, Ethiopia, El Salvador, Canada, and Bangladesh, all around the globe. America truly is a great melting pot, and we are all enriched and better for it. No matter where you come from today, each of you will be able to say you are a US citizen. Now, as citizens, you have rights protected under our Constitution and enforced, if necessary, in courts around this country by judges just like me. You have the right to practice your faith or not to follow any religion at all if you don't want to. You have the right to speak freely about matters that you care about and the right to privacy in your home. As citizens, you are each equal in fundamental rights, equal before the law, with an equal share in the freedom to pursue your own version of happiness. Of course, our Constitution does not guarantee that you will find happiness, but the founders of our nation intended in the Declaration of Independence to design a form of government where you are free to try. <laughs> now, as new citizens, we not only have rights, but we also have duties and responsibilities. And you've heard from our other speakers about some of those. And I'm gonna detail them in my own way because what I'm going to urge you to do is to make three choices about your lives here. First, I hope you do choose to be involved. We are self-governing people and self-government works best when citizens are involved and informed. You should seek to inform yourselves, read and listen and understand the choices we face as a nation. As an educated citizenry is essential to the continuation of a self-governing country. Your children and grandchildren will learn the duties of citizenship by watching you. When you go to vote, take your children we have elections every two years and presidential election that happens every four years. Pay attention to the news and to what our elected officials say and what they do. Talk to your children about what you hear. Teach your children through your actions that not only are we free to complain about our political leaders, we can vote to change them or to keep them. This decision can be important for you and the direction you want for our country. The United States may not be perfect, but we have a very powerful tool in the voting booth to make improvements as you see fit. I hope you also make a second choice. Choose to make a positive contribution to the community in which you live. We expect you to be law-abiding, but as citizens, expect more from yourselves than that. We may not, all, may not all be able to perform public service at the level of the speakers you've heard here today, but we can all do our part, whether it's picking up litter, helping a neighbor, or volunteering at your children's school, or teaching future citizens um, how to pass the naturalization exam, as Secretary Duke did. Finally, I hope you choose to share your stories. Many Americans take their citizenship for granted. By telling your story about why you chose to come here and what you went through to get here helps fellow Americans appreciate what we have in our country. Plus, America is a richer place because of your stories and your cultural experiences that you bring here with you. America's strength is in the diversity of our people. So please choose to be involved, choose to make a positive contribution to your community, and choose to tell your stories. By your conduct and your qualifications and actions here this morning, you have each earned your rightful place to be called an American citizen. 
So congratulations to everyone. This concludes the ceremony. The official court is now adjourned.